now discussing some of the uh, T-centric related um, adverse event management we'll talk about in clinical scenarios. So clinical scenario one, 57 year old male patient with metastatic urothelial cancer that is spread to lymph nodes and lungs. PDL1 expression was greater than or equal to 1%. In terms of his past history of treatment, he had first line cisplatinum gemcitabine, six cycles. In view of progression, the patient was started on T-centric and the rash developed after four doses of treatment. Presented with grade two skin rash, over 20% of the body surface area with grade one pruritus. In terms of treatment, topical steroids and antihistamines were started and proceeded with treatment. In terms of grade 1 skin rash with or without symptoms, less than 10% body surface area, avoid skin irritants, avoid sun exposure, topical emollients will be recommended, topical steroids, mild strength with cream, uh, with oral or topical antihistamines for itching and you can proceed with treatment. Assessment is key in all these toxicities, physical examination, exclude other causes like viral illness, infection or any other drug rash. Then you will be moving on to supportive management as above. If there is grade 2 toxicity where the rash occurs in 10 to 30 percent of body surface area. So grade 1 is less than 10 percent of body surface area, grade 2 is 10 to 30 percent of body surface area. Again supportive management, topical steroids and um, moderate to strength. Similarly, cream, cream you can use twice a day with or without oral or topical antihistamines for itching as well. So in terms of the ESMO guidelines, in terms of grade one, two cancer immunotherapy, uh, you can continue with that uh, sort of uh, immunotherapy. Treatment will be uh, topical emollients, antihistamines in the cases of pruritus or, and or uh, topical or mild strength corticosteroids. In terms of follow-up, uh, reinitiate cancer immunotherapy when it is grade 1. For grade 3 rash, you will interrupt the treatment, start immediately and uh, treatment with topical emollients, antihistamines and high strength corticosteroids. And you can reinitiate cancer immunotherapy when the rash has resolved. For grade 4 toxicity, you will be permanently discontinuing the immune uh, checkpoint inhibitor treatment. You will seek the urgent dermatology colleagues help and start intravenous corticosteroids 1 to 2 milligram per kilogram methylprednisolone and then taper based on response to the adverse events. So again uh, identifying the toxicity and managing it appropriately is key to improved outcome with these drugs. In terms of second clinical scenario 54 year old female patient with metastatic urothelial cancer to lymph nodes, lungs and liver. She had stable disease with carboplatin and gemcitabine for three cycles then progressed after six cycles and started on second line T-centric treatment. The presentation showed routine TSH showed low TSH, heart rate was 100 beats per minute with intermittent palpitations. Additional blood tests showed a very low TSH at 0 0.002 with a normal range is 0.46 to 4.70. Uh, free T4 was 5.1, free T3 was 1,405 with a normal range of 250 to 390. Thyroglobulin was raised at 48.7. So quite significant toxicity in that sense. Patient was started on a beta blocker with good effect, but at eight weeks, TSH and T3, T4 decreased in the normal range. And then the beta blocker was discontinued. So occurrence of this sort of a hyperthyroidism is observed with PD-1, PD-L1 inhibitors and is, it often develops into hypothyroidism. So that's why it's very important to be looking at these uh, endocrine toxicities uh, very closely, monitoring them with, with regular bloods as well. So in terms of the treatment for um, systemic hyperthyroidism, you will interrupt the treatment and start symptomatic therapy, including anti-thyroid uh, uh, medicinal products as needed, evaluate TSH and free T3, T4. Then you can restart T-centric when asymptomatic, but if there is no improvement, then permanently discontinue T-centric. If it's significant toxicity, then with symptomatic hypothyroidism, in those cases as well, you will interrupt the treatment uh, and start hormone replacement therapy, 
uh, TSH and clinical evaluation every uh, three to five days and uh, restart T-centric when asymptomatic and TSH levels are decreasing. If there is no improvement, then you will be permanently discontinuing T-centric. So, in terms of both hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism, you need to be careful in monitoring them and treating them according to the protocol and the guidelines. In another case, urothelial cancer of left renal pelvis in a 67-year-old male patient, post-nephrouretrectomy, developed progression in lymph nodes and liver, carboplatin gemcitabine was given for six cycles with partial response. Five months later, patient progressed and was treated with second-line T-centric treatment, developed dyspnea and fatigue, pulse oximetry showed 84%, uh, oxygen saturation, and there was grade 3 pneumonitis at 6 weeks. Patient was admitted to the hospital and started on supplemental oxygen uh, and 2 milligram per kilogram per day of prednisolone. Uh, patient experienced immediate relief of dyspnea and initial partial resolution of the pulmonary infiltrates. Bronchoscopy and lung biopsy were considered but not performed because the clinical course and immediate response to steroids were consistent with immune related pneumonitis. The steroids were slowly tapered over one month and T-centric was permanently discontinued. In a, in a sort of a clinical scenario 4, a 60-year-old female patient with metastatic urothelial cancer, post first line cisplatinum gemcitabine chemotherapy, progressed after, within 6 months and was started on second line T-centric treatment. Grade 2 diarrhea occurred 6 bowel movements per day over 3 days prior to 4 dose of T-centric. Diarrhea occurred nocturnally as well and was associated with crampy abdominal pain. Next dose of T-centric was postponed and prednisolone was initiated 1 mg per kilogram per day. IV fluids as an outpatient 3 days per week. Prednisolone was slowly tapered over 4 weeks with full resolution of the colitis. T-centric was reinitiated after resolution of the colitis. And the way you will be treating grade 2, you will be interrupting the dose, starting them on um, steroids and then reassessing them and you can resume T-centric if the uh, colitis grade is uh, 1 within 12 weeks. For grade 3, you will interrupt, initiate again symptomatic treatment, monitoring them very, uh, monitoring them daily, treating them with 1 milligram, 1 to 2 milligram per kilogram per day of intravenous uh, methylprednisolone or equivalent followed by 1 to 2 milligram per kilogram per day prednisolone equivalent upon improvement. Uh, you will reassess after 3 to 5 days, resume T-centric if the uh, grade is less than, uh, becomes less than 1, grade is 1 or within 12 weeks, treat as grade 4 if there is no improvement. For grade 4, you will be permanently discontinuing the T-centric treatment, initiating symptomatic treatment and monitoring them daily, considering endoscopy with biopsy, treating with 1 to 2 milligram per kilogram per day of IV methylprednisolone or equivalent followed by 1 to 2 milligram per kilogram per day uh, methyl uh, prednisolone or equivalent upon improvement. Reassessing them on a very regular basis every 1 to 3 days and then tapering steroids once the grade is 1 and consider additional immunosuppressant and refer them to gastroenterologist. The key thing in terms of the management of immune related adverse event is that clinician and patient education is key on the grading of immune related adverse events. This is essential for recognition and management uh, of the symptoms appropriately and efficiently. Immune-related adverse events are generally manageable with immunosuppressive therapy and appropriate monitoring. Prompt and appropriate intervention is critical for mitigation of immune-related adverse events. So this can be delivered safely, but we require a number of our other consultant colleagues work, and we're all working together in providing the best care for our patients for these drugs as well.